Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So as some of you may have seen, I recently had my endometriosis excision surgery done. I'm still in the middle of recovering. I'm giving myself around three months to fully recover, but my doctor told me that it would take around two weeks for me to slowly begin to recover and get back into work. So I'm in my second week of recovery. I'm doing really, really well so far. But I've been posting a lot of endometriosis awareness videos on my TikTok. If you aren't following my TikTok yet, go follow my TikTok. I will leave the links down below. But I made a little endometriosis awareness video and a few women were asking questions on there as I was encouraging. Originally, I was thinking maybe I'll reply to those questions on TikTok. But since I upload more content more frequently on TikTok, I didn't want to just saturate my TikTok page with all these answers to a question of endometriosis. So I thought it would be a better idea to just make one concise videos where I hit all those questions and give all the advice I have to offer in regards to those questions. Who knows, maybe I'll make more moving forward if I keep getting more and more questions being asked or advice being asked. But this is going to be like my first official endometriosis Q&A question and answer advice video. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So I just want to preface this Q&A, this endometriosis Q&A with this disclaimer that every person with endometriosis is going to have different types of symptoms and how those symptoms transform will also be unique to that person and their own circumstances. So I can talk about my own unique experience, my symptoms, how they transformed and that's not gonna relate to everyone. Some of you watching may relate to one of my symptoms, some of you may relate to all of my symptoms, but this is why it's so important for women out there who may suspect they have endometriosis and or have extremely painful period symptoms or just women health issues, or just honestly, other health issues that may not seem associated with your period, but are because of how endometriosis is, I really encourage you to do your research. And honestly, I think research is so essential when it comes to endometriosis because not enough OBGYN and doctors, sadly, are not educated enough on endometriosis, which is why so many women go undiagnosed and untreated. For me personally, I did so many hours of my own research when I was advocating for myself to all these doctors in my life about how I think I have endometriosis. I'm certain I have endometriosis. This is why. If it wasn't for my own research, I genuinely don't think I would be here today on the other side of that surgery. So for me personally, Personally, I watched countless of TED Talks videos on YouTube about endometriosis. Bless those women. I've listened to so many hours of podcasts on Spotify of endometriosis experiences from all these different types of women. And this is what's so beautiful about this small community is that the women who have been diagnosed with endometriosis feel so passionately about their chronic illness that they go out and they speak up about their own experience and stories and even provide a platform for other women to do so as well and for women like me who was just so left in the dark and didn't know what to do if it wasn't for women like that i would be completely lost still suffering in the dark with no answers. If it wasn't for those podcasts, I wouldn't be able to specify my specific symptoms and be able to know, oh my God, this isn't just breathing problems. This isn't just back pain. These are all symptoms that I was suffering with and I thought they were all separate, but they were all correlating to one illness, which was endometriosis. And I was able to start to track my symptoms a lot more closely and detailed. I was able to express it a lot clearer to doctors and my endometriosis specialist that I was able to see. It's, it's just beautiful. And that is a big reason why I feel like I feel so passionate about sharing my story as well because it's so important for women out there to begin talking about their endometriosis experience so that it could bring awareness 
to endometriosis and inform women out there who may think that they're struggling with endometriosis and just don't know what to do about it, doesn't know what that means to them, what it looks like, what to even look for. So hopefully with videos like this and the other videos I made with endometriosis, it can really bring a sense of comfort and it could educate people out there, inform people out there more on this chronic illness. With that being said, I'm going to get into some of the questions that you guys have asked me on my endometriosis awareness video. So first question I have here is from Houdini Pobini and they asked, do you still suffer from endometriosis? Does it come back and how did they treat you? So endometriosis is a chronic illness. It's never cured. There's no cure for it. To answer your question simply, I will always suffer from endometriosis for the rest of my life, but there are ways you can help treat the endometriosis so that your quality of life isn't unbearable. And so I'm going to kind of go over what those options are. First option is diet. So I don't think a lot of people realize how important diet is when it comes to endometriosis. Because endometriosis is a chronic inflammatory condition, depending on what you eat and what your diet consists of, your endometriosis can feel worse depending on your diet. So things that can cause inflammation within your body and cause inflammation within the endometriosis are things like dairy, red meat, gluten, caffeine, coffee, things like that. And I'm sure I'm missing other things. If I am, I'll put them on the screen. But at the peak of my worsening chronic pain, I really had no other choice but to manage my pain through my diet. Granted, for me personally, the diet can only do so much once your endometriosis is that bad, but the thing here is, is managing the pain through my diet made it so that the pain wasn't completely unbearable anymore. So I would still be able to do things. Granted, I wouldn't be able to do what I would normally do without the chronic pain, but it's a matter of me not being bedridden for a whole day. So I cut out dairy completely from my diet. I cut out gluten. Gluten was the most important thing I cut out. I didn't eat much dairy to begin with. I'm not a really big cheese person. The only thing I really love about dairy is things like chocolate or cream. I really love cream. I used to put cream all the time in my coffee. And I noticed that putting that little bit of cream in my coffee every single morning contributed a lot to my pain. And so when I cut that out, along with going gluten-free, along with cutting red meat out, I stopped drinking coffee at some point as well. I kind of just opted for tea. My pain levels, it went from like a 15 out of 10 to like a six or seven out of 10. And so I cannot stress this enough, whether or not your endometriosis pain is really bad, manageable or whatever, and whether or not you've had surgery and you have those treatment plans in place, you should still always manage that endometriosis through your diet and that should be something you implement to your life in a longevity point of view. I know that change can be very overwhelming. For me personally, I'm a really big foodie. So when I had to cut those big things out of my diet, like gluten, gluten is such a staple in so many meals. And when you go out to eat, you can't really eat anything without eating gluten, right? It was kind of shocking to my system at first when I had to cut these things out. It took me a while to even get to the point where I was willing to cut them out because I was just not taking it seriously. I think I was kind of in denial. I was just like, I could still eat normally and it won't really affect me that much. But after so many times where I would eat like garlic noodles or, or anything else and then be completely out all day and my endometriosis pain was just excruciating, time after time again, I would realize it's really not worth it. It's not worth feeling this amount of pain all day just for one meal. And so I started to really commit to those diet changes. And luckily enough, 
We are in a day and age where there's a lot of alternatives out there. When you go to Whole Foods, when you go to Sprouts, when you go to Trader Joe's, there's so many gluten-free options, gluten-free pasta, gluten-free bread. There's so many dairy-free options as well. And there's so many recipes you can find online that is dairy-free, gluten-free, vegan, that will help you feel better. And I'm not talking about like skinny feel better. I'm talking about you're not gonna experience that excruciating inflammation pain. And it's also going to allow you to enjoy food still. You know, you don't have to just eat grilled chicken and broccoli. You could still eat your spaghetti bolognese. You just have to opt out for a gluten-free pasta and you may have to figure out how to work with the gluten-free products that will make it still have the similar consistency to regular gluten. But these are things that you should be willing to do for the sake of your own health. So another thing you could do to help with the endometriosis and manage it is birth control. And so birth control options, I believe your birth control has to have this specific hormone called progestin. It basically helps counteract the estrogen and estrogen is like the worst enemy to endometriosis. So anything that can increase your estrogen levels is going to help exacerbate the endometriosis. So progestin helps slows it down and counteracts it. So for me, for so many years of my life, I was on birth control pills that made it so that I wasn't getting my period every single month. I was getting my period once every three months. So I believe I only had my period four times a year. And because I wasn't having my period every month, every time I did have my period, it was extremely light compared to what it normally would be. So this specific plan helped my endometriosis a lot. It helped slow it down. It doesn't cure it, but it helps slow it down. But the thing is, is I didn't know that I had endometriosis all those years. I just knew that my periods were so painful. So my OBGYN at the time was like, let's just give you as little periods as you can possibly have. This is what I'm gonna have prescribed to you, birth control pills, take it every single month, skip the placebo week for three months straight, and then have your period and then do the next three months of birth control with no placebo week. So that's what I was doing and that's how I was managing my endometriosis from high school through college. And it did pretty well because although my period cramps were still really bad, I didn't have like a progression of symptoms. I didn't have like worsening endometriosis to the point where I started having new symptoms. It was just like every time I had my period, I had those extremely painful period cramps, but at least I was having it once every three months rather than every month. So it was manageable. Okay, so another option is you could also get a shot that triggers menopause in you. This will be suggested by some doctors when it comes to treating endometriosis, but I do want to warn you guys that I have a friend with severe endometriosis and she had this shot as a treatment plan before she had her surgeries and she had a terrible experience. It was extremely painful and her symptoms afterwards were just unbearable and she warned me about it. She told me, you know, if your doctors ever offer this shot to you, don't take it. But with that being said, there are women who do say it's helpful, but I just want to say that is an option, but please, there's so many other ways you can manage your endometriosis that won't be this shot that will probably help you more and will be a better option for you. So Although I'm saying this shot is an option, please just try not to take it unless all the other options are for some reason unattainable for you. The other option, and this one is the best way you can treat your endometriosis, and that's surgery. So with surgery, there's different options here, and I'm going to go over it. First, there's the laparoscopy, which isn't to treat the endometriosis, but it is the only formal way you could get your diagnosis. Endometriosis, you can get ultrasounds done, you can get imaging done, but for a lot of women like me, nothing is found on imaging. So sadly, for my, from my experience, I had a vaginal ultrasound, but they didn't find anything, and a lot of my doctors use that as a 
excuse or proof that I didn't have endometriosis when I did. When I went to see my endometriosis specialist finally, I told her I didn't have anything on my ultrasounds and she informed me that that is no indication whether or not a woman has endometriosis or not. You could still have endometriosis even when you don't find anything on the ultrasounds. So I say this to tell you guys that you can go and get ultrasounds done, but it's really not going to do anything, honestly, because you're going to have to get that surgery anyways to get formally diagnosed. So depending on your insurance or whatever, I'm just saying this because someone may have to pay like hundreds of dollars to go get that ultrasound and it's just not worth it because it doesn't make that much of a difference when it comes to your diagnosis and your treatment. So if there's a way you can skip that ultrasound and just go straight into getting that laparoscopy, I would suggest you do that. Obviously, everyone's different. That is just my suggestion, because even if they found something in your ultrasound, they would still have to go in with the laparoscopy to find where those endometriosis is. So the ultrasound really doesn't make that much of a difference. And if anything, it can be harmful for you because in my case and in other people's cases, the ultrasound doesn't find anything. And if that's the case, you don't want doctors to have another excuse to gaslight you and tell you you don't have endometriosis. So yeah, you have to get the laparoscopy to get formally diagnosed. There's no exceptions for that. For me personally, when I had my surgery scheduled for the laparoscopy diagnosis, my doctor told me, if I'm already in there looking for your endometriosis to diagnose you, I may as well also cut out the endometriosis that I find. So that goes to the treatment surgery that is the gold standard for treating endometriosis, and that is excision surgery. So there's two different types of ways you can get rid of the endometriosis. There's excision and there's ablation. Excision, they're cutting the endometriosis out. Ablation, they're just burning like the surface of the endometriosis off. Ablation is highly not recommended to treating endometriosis because imagine pulling a plant out from the ground. Excision is like pulling the plant out and all the roots. So there's no way for that plant to grow in the future in that same place. Ablation is kind of like cutting the plant off, but the roots are still in the ground. So there's a higher chance for the endometriosis to grow back. On top of that, because of ablation and they're burning it off, there's now scar tissue there. So when the endo grows back, it's a lot more painful a lot of the times for women to experience their endometriosis returning after the ablation surgery. So if you're looking for surgery and you're planning surgery with your doctor, make sure you ask them. This is the number one question you should ask them, and it's what treatment plan are you looking to do for me? I want to make sure you're doing excision surgery. That is something I made sure with my doctor and she said, yes, that is the only way I treat endometriosis is through excision. But I must note, if you do have endometriosis in your diaphragm or lungs, the best way to treat that is ablation because you don't want to be cutting in those areas because you don't want to puncture those areas where you would be breathing because you don't want there to be a chance of like poking a hole or whatever. Specifically with diaphragmatic endometriosis and endometriosis on your lungs, which is rare but possible, ablation is recommended for treating those areas specifically, but everywhere else, excision is the gold standard. Also, another way to prevent and treat endometriosis, it doesn't cure it, like all these other things, there's no cure, but these are ways you could treat endometriosis is getting a hysterectomy. Obviously, for a lot of reasons, like wanting to have kids, this can't be an option for a lot of women and isn't an option that a lot of women want to resort to. But depending on your circumstances, that is also an option and it really lessens the chances of endometriosis growing back or growing back as fast as it was before and a lot of women with a severe endometriosis opt to hysterectomies because they would rather do that than deal with the chronic pain of endometriosis mm -hmm. my friend that i know in real life personally opted to the hysterectomy because she just had extremely severe endometriosis and 
That is something you should be talking about with your doctor as well. What are your options for surgeries? Whether or not you want to have kids in the future and how you can prepare for that. You know, if you do want kids, but the hysterectomy is kind of the only way you can treat your endometriosis, you have options there. You could freeze your eggs. You could go for adoption, you know, those are things that you should be thinking about, talking about with your partner or talking about with your doctor. So there's a comment left by the lazy boyfriend and they said, my cramps used to be really bad for over 10 years. In recent years, they've calmed down, but occasionally it's bad. I don't know why. It doesn't seem to line up with endo symptoms other than the pain on the first and second day of my period. I also have PMDD. I think this comment really highlights the fact that endometriosis can look very different for every woman and it is an evolution of symptoms. Just because your period cramps were really bad 10 years ago and it's slowed down recently doesn't mean you don't have endometriosis. And I'm not saying you do have endometriosis, I'm saying hypothetically if you do, you could have transforming symptoms and still have endometriosis. The pain getting less severe could also be subjective, right? Because a lot of women with endometriosis have suffered such intense pain for so long, we kind of get used to it. So a lot of us have high pain tolerances and we actually get so jaded to pain that we don't quite know how to rate our pain or conceptualize our pain anymore. So a lot of women with endometriosis that's been struggling with endometriosis for a while will feel extreme pain, but we won't perceive it as so, if that makes sense. So for example, if I experience a pain that's 10 out of 10 on the surface to other people, I will look like I'm not experiencing any pain at all. So I'm not saying this is what you're going through, but I'm saying it could be a possibility. You say that your pain was extremely bad 10 years ago and it's not that bad now. What if you just got used to it now? Um, what if you've learned how to bear with that extremely bad pain? But you know, there could be many reasons why the pain has lessened. There has been a lot of women that have endometriosis that don't experience pain. Pain is not a direct indication of endometriosis. There's been women out there who have had stage four endometriosis and hasn't experienced any symptoms or not that many symptoms and they haven't really experienced pain. So I don't want you to discount endometriosis just because of those pain levels that you're either experiencing or not experiencing. So that is a little bit of information when it comes to pain and endometriosis. They're not necessarily correlated. And I have a comment here from Arti Strutz. Arti Strutz. And I have a comment here from artists. And I have a comment here from Artists Roots. And they said, curious about how your experience with the surgery has been. I've been putting it off, but would love to know if it's worth it. So um, this is my advice. This is my opinion. Obviously, take what resonates and leave what doesn't. But if you can get a surgery for endometriosis, get it. If you have endometriosis, get the surgery. Because whether or not your symptoms are excruciating or manageable, it's just not good to have your endometriosis sitting in your body anyways because... You don't know how that will affect you long term because endometriosis isn't just, you know, an inflammatory chronic condition. It's not just something associated with your period. Endometriosis can affect your fertility. Endometriosis can affect your back pain, your shoulder pain. Endometriosis can affect how your other organs are functioning. In some cases, endometriosis can cause your lungs to collapse. Endometriosis affects other parts of your health that you wouldn't think it would affect, but it does. So if you're just kind of like putting it on the back burner because it's not that important right now, you don't want to wait till it's too late or until it's in your face and you have to get the surgery or else something else is kind of going to be compromised. So that's kind of my advice and my opinion on it. 
And from my experience, my endometriosis surgery was very smooth. My doctor was able to excise all of my endometriosis, which was a lot. And already I've been experiencing a lot less inflammation. Before surgery, I could feel the endometriosis at all times on the left side of my body where a lot of my endometriosis was found and I just felt like there was this five pound weight that was constantly in my lower abdominal region especially on my left side and it just felt like I almost was carrying tumors in my body and so after surgery, granted I'm not fully healed yet, but immediately waking up from surgery, I feel like I don't feel that weight anymore and I feel free from it. So that's my two cents on it. Obviously, your body, your choice, you have full control over what you do with your body. Get all the information you need to inform you on your own decisions. I have a comment here influencing myself and they said I get the same symptoms but get gaslit all the time. I've extensively looked up endo and related to it too much. And on those same lines, I also have this other comment from this viewer saying, thank you so much. I've been suffering with endo since I was 10 and it took me until 23 to find a doctor willing to properly diagnose me. No one in my life ever took my pain seriously because endo is not talked about enough and on those same lines another viewer says my doctor won't listen to me so all of these comments from these viewers reflect my experience and also the experiences of so many other women out there of just not being taken seriously being gaslighted and going undiagnosed untreated and just kind of suffering in the dark with no options and you're just so confused i was on the same boat i got my period at 10 i've struggled with extremely excruciating period cramps for my whole life of having my period i wasn't diagnosed or treated for endometriosis surgically until i was 25. i'm considered young for getting endometriosis surgery because endometriosis is so understudied and so underdiagnosed, women don't typically really get diagnosed or treated for endo until they're having kids and they're having issues. So in their 30s, maybe even into their 50s is when women are finally getting diagnosed and treated. And that is such a failure to endo survivors out there to have lived majority of your life in that much pain and not get treated for it is honestly such a tragedy. So I consider myself so lucky that I was diagnosed and treated at 25, but that isn't to say I didn't struggle to get to this point. I've had doctors literally laugh in my face and tell me, you know, you could keep coming back to this office and trying to tell me you have endometriosis, but I'm just going to send you home again and again because you don't have it. I've had doctors say things like, you don't have endometriosis. It's funny you think you do. If anything, you might have vaginal cancer, but we can't do anything about that until it gets really bad. You know, these are some of the things that I've heard from my doctors. It's just, it, it's extremely traumatizing. I'm not going to lie. For me personally, being gaslit this much while you're experiencing chronic pain for years is such a unique experience that really affects you as a person because you genuinely feel like you have no help. It's like, imagine suffering on your own for so long in the dark and when you finally muster up enough courage to go see a doctor and talk about these symptoms to them and they totally discount you and laugh at you and not only that but say, you know, I'm not going to help you because there's nothing here that you need help for. It's extremely invalidating. It's extremely traumatizing. I got to a point where I felt so numb and I felt like I was just ready to give up that I went months just suffering with those symptoms, feeling like this is just my life and I, I can't do anything about it because no one will help. Finally, I was lucky enough to see a really good OBGYN. She was working at my clinic and she was new and she was only working once a week. 
but I was crying to my general doctor about all these experiences I had with these other OBGYNs and nurse practitioners that totally laughed at me, discounted me, and validated me. And I was just crying to my general doctor saying, I feel helpless, I feel hopeless, I don't know what to do, I need help. And my general doctor is like, oh, we just so happen to have a really good OBGYN that's from, you know, these bigger hospitals. And she's working at our clinic. I go to a small clinic and she's working at our clinic once a week. And let me just get you in with her and hopefully she could help you. And luckily enough, I got my appointment with her and immediately she believed me and she was like, I'm so sorry that you were so invalidated. I'm sorry that no one could help you, but I'm going to do everything I can do to help you. By doing that, I'm going to refer you to an endometriosis specialist. Her official title is the pelvic pain specialist, a woman's pelvic pain specialist. And... I wasn't able to see her for like months. So months passed and I finally went in to see this pel woman's pelvic pain specialist. I felt like since so much time passed in between and I had so many bad experiences with other doctors, when I went in to see this woman's pelvic pain specialist, I had at this point completely gaslighted myself out of thinking I had endometriosis. And I was like, it took me two years to see this specialist, so I may as well just go to this appointment and have her tell me I don't have anything and then just move on with my life. So I went in and she kind of asked me about my symptoms and I just kind of said these very general symptoms and I didn't want to get into it because I was just defeated at this point. And she gave me a pelvic evaluation as well. And after 15 minutes of talking and giving me the evaluation, she was like, I think you have endometriosis. When do you want to schedule your surgery? When she said that, I had a really insane moment of disassociation where I just felt like I wasn't in my body and I wasn't experiencing real life. And I was just like, is this happening? Like, she's telling me I have endometriosis. She's wanting to perform surgery on me. I just wanted to say that to almost like provide a sense of comfort for anyone out there who may be feeling hopeless when it comes to your endometriosis surgery. I know exactly how you feel. I was there even in that room with that specialist asking me to schedule that surgery. I was still gaslighting myself. I was still hopeless and defeated. Even when I was about to be rolled into the operating room to get the surgery, I was still gaslighting myself that I didn't have endometriosis. And that is just the sad truth about a lot of the gaslighting and invalidation women go through. If my story can provide any sort of hope that, you know, I could still have went through all of that and be on the other end of the surgery with the diagnosis and with the endometriosis all excised and cut out, I really hope it could be a drive for those out there who may have been in my position to really start advocating for themselves, to never stop advocating for themselves and to keep going. Don't give up. See different doctors if you have to, but you will be able to get to that point and you will be able to get treated for your endometriosis as long as you don't give up on yourself because Doctors will fail you, doctors will discount you and invalidate you, but you have to be there to validate yourself and stand up for yourself and get the treatment that you deserve. Okay, so the last comment I'm going to answer here is from Soprano Livia. I love that name, by the way. And they said, I'm so thankful for this showing up on my For You page. I've been really suspecting there might be something wrong for quite a while. And hearing this is a bit of a wake-up call. I've always had pretty painful periods, but recently it's gotten even worse. I've had about five periods in this year alone where I was bedridden for at least a day, but usually more. They've gotten so bad that I've considered taking myself to the ER because of how horribly I felt. Do you have any suggestions on how to get professional advice or to be taken seriously by professionals? Thanks again for sharing your story. First of all, Olivia, thank you for sharing your experience and thank you for asking such in-depth questions. It really helps for me 
when I'm answering to have detailed questions like this and I'm sure it'll help so many other women out there to hear these questions being answered but first thing I want to address is these painful period cramps that you're getting this is something that I needed to learn and I I want to say it on here as well because I'm sure if I needed to learn it other women out there need to learn it as well but painful period cramps are not normal it's normal to have like a discomfort maybe but a painful excruciating period cramp where you can't do things and it's affecting your day and your quality of life is not normal and for so many years i thought it was normal because throughout high school i always heard women and other girls complaining about their periods like oh my god my cramps are so bad today oh my god and i'm not discounting their pain i'm sure a lot of them do experience extremely bad pain or Maybe they experience pain and they just like to complain about it. But for me personally, I took that as an indication of like painful periods are normal. Cramps are normal. When in reality, the amount of pain I was feeling is not normal. My senior year of high school, I basically like was missing school once every two weeks or so. I was missing physical activities in sports. When I had my periods, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't leave my bed. I was just in the fetal position in so much pain. I couldn't talk. I couldn't breathe sometimes. My legs would go numb. Sometimes I would even vomit from the pain. These are all symptoms that I want to express that I went through so that if any of you relate to those symptoms, just know that that is not normal. And another indicator is the worsening pain. So you mentioned that your painful periods are getting worse. That is something that I also experienced. My periods were always excruciating, but it got to a point where I was experiencing those excruciating period pains even when I wasn't on my period. For example, I would start getting extremely bad cramps, like the types of excruciating period cramps that I get on the day of my first day of period. But I would get those and expect to start bleeding within the same day or the day after. And I wouldn't get my period for like the next three to four weeks. I would have those period cramps throughout me not bleeding. So it's like, why was I having excruciating period cramps when I wasn't even bleeding and when I wasn't even on my period? The left side of my abdomen would protrude further out than the right. Those were associated with these cramps that I would feel. I noticed that there was always like a unevenness of my abdomen where the left side of me would be protruding outward more. When I would be experiencing those cramps, I noticed that the protrusion would be even more. When I was experiencing more inflammation, the protrusion would be even more. And come to realize after my endometriosis diagnosis and surgery, she specifically found more endometriosis on the left side of my body than the right. So that would explain the unevenness and the pain that I was experiencing being more on the left side than the right. Like you, I ended up in the ER. I don't go to the ER often. I've been once before because I had a kidney infection. But other than that, I don't really go to the ER. I have high pain tolerance as well. That's another thing. I've been struggling with chronic pain for months that one day I just couldn't handle it anymore and I went to the ER, which was a horrible experience. Maybe I'll make a video about that another time. They couldn't help me. They didn't find anything. They didn't know what was wrong with me. I ended up just leaving because they left me in a room for hours and no one came to check up on me. And so I left and I kind of posted about that experience on my Instagram and one of my friends replied to me and she mentioned the word endometriosis and that was actually the first time I ever heard about endometriosis. I was so desperate at that point for any sort of help that I just started doing research, deep diving into my own research and immediately as I was learning more and more about endometriosis, I just knew I had it. This is exactly what I had and now I had all these answers as to why I was suffering so much. Yeah, and you asked for me to give some suggestions on how to get professional advice or to be taken seriously by professionals. I want to preface this by saying you could do 
as much as you can, prepare as much as you want, and tell your doctors your symptoms, be confident, be advocating for yourself, have that notebook with you with all your symptoms, and that doctor can still discount you and still invalidate you and still gaslight you. I just want to get that very clear because there were so many times I went into that doctor's office very confident with all, like ready to go with all of my symptoms, and I was still gaslit and invalidated. So, I say this because I want it, I want you guys to know that it's not your fault and you could do as much or as little as you can, but still how a doctor treats you is not your fault and it will never be your fault. It is their fault. It is their incompetence. It is their ignorance, okay? But with that being said, I do want to give advice and that is, again, research. Keep a pain journal. Keep track of the dates of your pain that you're experiencing, what pain you're experiencing specifically, and what you think the pain is a result of. So for example, is the pain you're experiencing a result of a specific food you ate or a meal you ate? Or is this pain correlated with something that has to do with your period? You know, keep track of those different types of pain you're experiencing, where you're experiencing it, and do your research and write down what symptoms of other women you align with as well so that you have all of these notes in a concise place where you can just be able to list off what it is you struggle with specifically and have the dates and days and documentation to back it up for anyone who may take you seriously and want to ask those questions. So those are some suggestions. Also, as well, you can experiment with food. Make sure you're eating different types of food and tracking how you feel afterwards. Write it down. And yes, pain journal. Research, pain journal. These are things that I suggest for you guys to do. To wrap it all up, don't lose hope despite what you may be going through. Do not lose hope. Keep advocating for yourself. As long as you keep advocating for yourself and keeping track of your symptoms and keep trying and seeing different doctors that will help you, you will eventually get to a place where you will be able to get the treatment that you deserve. But yes, these are all of your questions that you guys were asking me. If you have anything that you're still wondering about, please leave them in the comment section down below and I will answer it or maybe I will make another video talking about it. Someone asked me to make a video talking about what symptoms to look out for when it comes to endometriosis. I did make a TikTok about it, but perhaps you guys want me to make a separate video on here as well, talking in extreme detail about my endometriosis journey and what symptoms I had and what that looked like to me. So if that's something you guys are interested in, please let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, I just want to say I know this journey of endometriosis can be so arduous and so invalidating and it could be very easy to lose hope but if you're listening this far take this as a sign to just not give up and to keep advocating for yourself even in moments where you are feeling hopeless you could still continue on advocating for yourself i know for sure that i was at a point where i felt so hopeless that i couldn't even imagine being at this point where i am today but i was just still going with the motions anyways and still seeing doctors still making those appointments um, and if that's what it takes to get you to have your surgery then by all means go for it but yes i'm gonna give myself more time to heal and i think i will make an endometriosis excision surgery update at the three months mark where i will be more fully healed and perhaps by that time i will have seen in more detail the quality of life that I have and the change in symptoms after getting all of my endometriosis excised. And if you like my content, please subscribe down below. But with that being said, you guys, I will see you guys on my next video. Bye.